April 23, 2024, News Report 1. According to reports, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken arrived in Shanghai on April 24 for a three-day visit to China. Blinken will meet with business leaders and students in Shanghai, then travel to Beijing for talks with Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi, possibly meeting with Chinese President Xi Jinping. The U.S. State Department briefed ahead of the trip that Blinken's visit to China has three objectives, to make progress on key issues, to directly express concerns on bilateral and global issues, and to responsibly manage competition to avoid misjudgment and conflict. Issues Blinken will directly express concerns about include, demanding China to stop supporting the Russian defense industry, urging China not to take provocative actions during the inauguration of Lai ching requesting China to refrain from provocative actions in the South China Sea, and to stop genocide and crimes against humanity against ethnic minorities and religious groups like the Uyghurs. Additionally, Blinken will discuss with the Chinese side topics such as the Middle East, fentanyl control, enhancing military exchanges, and the risks and security of artificial intelligence. Reuters reported that the most important task of Blinken's visit to China this time is to request China to stop supporting the Russian defense industry. U.S. officials said that the U.S. government has preliminarily discussed the possibility of imposing sanctions on Chinese state-owned banks, but has not yet formulated an implementation plan. They hope to resolve the issue through diplomatic means to avoid the implementation of sanctions. Before Blinken arrived in Shanghai, Chinese officials and media expressed strong opposition to the U.S. strategy of containment against China and vowed to counter it, but did not disclose specific measures. On April 23, the Chinese Navy released a promotional video of its submarine forces, showcasing the capabilities of its JL-2 submarine-launched ballistic missiles, which can carry three to six nuclear warheads with a range of 8,000 kilometers. News Report 2 According to Tsai Xin, the U.S. Senate voted on April 23 to pass a bill targeting TikTok. U.S. President Biden stated that once the bill is delivered to his office on April 24, he will sign it. The bill requires TikTok's parent company, ByteDance, to divest TikTok's business within one year, otherwise TikTok will be banned from being listed on U.S. app stores and may even be banned from operating. Sources said that ByteDance is currently not considering divesting TikTok's business, but is considering litigation. ByteDance believes that divesting TikTok's business is fundamentally impossible. TikTok is currently not seeking any potential buyers, as there are no suitable buyers and it is too late. Tsai Xin said that TikTok internally has unified its stance, believing that the bill only has the option of banning. Zhu Keliang, director of the Silicon Valley office of the American law firm Deckert, said that TikTok can sue the U.S. government for three reasons, first, accusing the U.S. Congress of baselessly claiming that TikTok harms U.S. national security, second, accusing the bill of setting overly harsh compliance and sale conditions, equivalent to the U.S. government forcibly confiscating TikTok's property, and third, accusing the infringement of users' freedom of speech. However, these three accusations do not seem to hold water. The third accusation is not valid because the bill does not require TikTok to shut down, so the accusation of infringing on freedom of speech is unfounded. As for whether the bill is too harsh and whether the one-year time frame is too tight, these are the second and third accusations. The U.S. Congress alleges that TikTok is unfounded, but there is ample evidence that ByteDance can access data from U.S. users, so this accusation is also unfounded. News Report 3 Xinhua News Agency reported that Chinese President Xi Jinping conducted another inspection in Chongqing from April 22 to 24. On the morning of April 24, Xi Jinping listened to a work report from Chongqing. During his three-day stay in Chongqing, he covered topics including the development of the western region, urban and rural integration, and rural revitalization. Xi Jinping emphasized the importance of many aspects, but did not directly point out existing problems or propose specific solutions, seemingly only giving a simple overview of the situation he observed, lacking substantive content. During this inspection, Xi Jinping proposed a new term, 
great food outlook. According to People's Daily, Xi Jinping stated during his inspection in Hunan in March that it is necessary to adhere to the great agriculture outlook and great practical outlook, actively develop characteristic agriculture and agricultural product processing, and improve the level of agricultural industrialization. In his inspection in Guangdong in April, Xi Jinping again emphasized the need to solve the eating problem, ensure food security, and establish a great food outlook. He proposed not only relying on land agriculture but also seeking development in marine agriculture, and proposed measures such as building offshore ranches. People's Daily stated that the core of the great food outlook is to expand the sources of food security, ensure the diversity, quantity, and quality of food, and adopt the strictest standards and regulatory measures. However, some views point out that Xi Jinping's proposal of the Great Food Outlook may reflect the possibility of problems in China's food supply. There have been massive famines in the past, and at that time, Chinese people had to eat some unusual things, so Xi Jinping's proposal of the Great Food Outlook has attracted attention and speculation. Some believe that Xi Jinping's proposal may indicate that China will face a food shortage in the future or is preparing for future food shortages. Further observation of Xi Jinping's future statements and policies is needed to assess this view. News Report 4 According to Tsai Xin, based on the quarterly report of Central Huijin, in the first quarter of this year, Central Huijin increased its holdings of ETFs by 120 billion shares and used 330 billion funds. These funds are mainly used for stability maintenance and support of the stock market. Central Huijin is a wholly state-owned enterprise whose mission is to hold shares of state-owned financial institutions. According to Tsaishin statistics, Central Huijin held investments from five ETF companies in the first quarter. By holding these ETFs, Central Huijin is actually investing in these companies, and then injecting funds into the stock market. In the fourth quarter of last year, Central Huijin had already invested 380 billion, plus 330 billion in the first quarter of this year, totaling more than 700 billion. This indicates that Central Huijin has supported the stability of the A-share market through the purchase of ETFs and other means. News Report 5 According to Reuters, the Ministry of Economy, Trade, and Industry and the Ministry of Finance of Japan issued a statement on April 24 announcing the initiation of an anti-dumping investigation into graphite electrodes from China. The statement pointed out that Japan's SEC Carbon Company, Limited, Tokai Carbon, and Japan Carbon submitted a request to the Japanese government in February this year to impose tariffs on graphite electrodes from China. The Japanese government decided to conduct an investigation in accordance with WTO agreements and domestic laws. China is the world's largest exporter of graphite, and graphite electrodes are mainly used in arc furnace steelmaking. This material has high electrical and thermal conductivity and can withstand high temperatures and pressures of arc furnaces. News Report 6 The Hong Kong Stock Exchange announced its first quarter financial report on April 24, showing revenue of 5.2 billion Hong Kong dollars, a 6% decrease compared to the same period last year, and a 13% decrease in profit. The average daily trading volume of the Hong Kong stock market was 99.4 billion Hong Kong dollars, a 22% year-on-year decrease. The amount of funds raised from new stock listings was also less than 100 billion Hong Kong dollars, a 22% year-on-year decrease, reaching 4.8 billion Hong Kong dollars, a 28% decrease. These data indicate that the situation of the Hong Kong stock market is not optimistic. Meanwhile, after the implementation of the Hong Kong version of the National Security Law and the legislation of Basic Law Article 23, Hong Kong's status as an Asian financial center has been affected, and it is considered to be on the decline. The Hang Seng Index has dropped from its historical high of 33,000 points to the current 17,200 points, and all indicators of the Hong Kong Stock Exchange have shown a comprehensive decline. News Report 7 the International Energy Agency, 
IEA, released a Global Electric Vehicle Outlook report on April 23. The report stated that global electric vehicle sales reached 14 million units last year, a 35% increase, setting a new historical record. Electric vehicles accounted for 18% of global automobile sales, an increase of 4.4%. The report also pointed out that last year, over half of the electric vehicles sold globally were manufactured in China. In contrast, China's share of gasoline-powered vehicles in the global market was only 10%, but for electric vehicles, it reached 50%. China remained the world's largest automobile exporter last year, exporting 4 million vehicles. The IEA stated that Chinese car manufacturers rely on large-scale manufacturing capabilities and government subsidies to conduct low-price dumping in the market, becoming the biggest beneficiaries. Additionally, China is also the world's largest purchaser of electric vehicles. Electric vehicles sold in the Chinese domestic market last year accounted for 60% of global sales, while Europe and the United States accounted for only 20% and 10% respectively. News Report 8 According to Reuters, U.S. prosecutors have requested a three-year prison sentence for Zhao Changpeng, the former CEO of the cryptocurrency exchange Binance. Zhao Changpeng is set to stand trial in the Seattle Federal Court on April 30. In June of last year, the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, filed 13 charges against Binance, Binance.us, and Zhao Changpeng, including exaggerating trading volume, transferring customer funds, and misleading investors. U.S. prosecutors pointed out that Binance did not report more than 100,000 transactions suspected of being related to terrorist organizations, including Hamas, ISIS, and Syria, to the U.S. government. In addition, there were also hacker transactions on Binance's platform extorting money from child sexual abuse websites. In November of last year, Binance and Xiao Changpeng admitted to violating U.S. anti-money laundering laws, with Binance paying a fine of $1 billion and Xiao Changpeng personally paying a fine of $50 million and stepping down as CEO. Xiao Changpeng was once the richest Chinese person and founded Binance in 2017, with his net worth reaching $90 billion by 2021. However, after pleading guilty, the next step is for the court to sentence him. He previously stated that if sentenced to a year and a half in prison, he would not appeal, but the final outcome still awaits the court's ruling. News Report 9 According to Reuters, the Israeli government is currently conducting a military operation in the southern Rafah area of the Gaza Strip and has set up a refugee camp in the Hayunis area, 5 kilometers away from the area, to prepare to evacuate about 1 million Palestinian residents. The Israeli government stated that the Rafah area is the last stronghold of Hamas, with four Hamas combat camps located there. Israel believes that without occupying Rafah, it will not be able to rescue hostages kidnapped by Hamas or defeat Hamas. According to the Israeli Ministry of Defense, two reserve units are already on mission in Gaza. On the other hand, Deutsche Welle reported that more and more demonstrations against Israel's military operations in Gaza are taking place on American university campuses. The large lawn of Columbia University's Manhattan campus has become a gathering place for protesters, with students setting up tents to protest. Columbia University President Shah Fig requested assistance from the New York police in clearing the area, leading to the arrest of over 100 students. However, after the area was cleared, students set up tents on the lawn again. In addition, hundreds of university faculty members have also gone on strike. Harvard University, New York University, Yale University, and other universities have also seen campus protest activities. Demonstrators believe that the U.S. government's support for Israel's actions in Gaza, funded by taxpayers' money, has led to an increasing number of civilian deaths, and they demand that President Biden stop supporting Israel and call for a permanent ceasefire in Gaza. In response to the protesters' demands, Biden has stated that if Israel cannot resolve the plight of Gaza civilians, the U.S. will change its support policy towards Israel. News Report 10 
According to a report released by Amnesty International on April 24, last year was a year of declining human rights worldwide. Factors such as war and artificial intelligence have pushed the international system to the brink of collapse. The report points out that wars in places like Gaza, Ukraine, and Sudan have made civilians victims. Additionally, fake videos and audio are being spread on the internet, and European countries are conducting polygraph tests on incoming individuals, with those giving dishonest answers being questioned by border personnel. Secretary General of Amnesty International, Karima, stated that the events of the past year indicate that the international order established in 1945 is on the brink of collapse. Countries with the ability to stop atrocities have failed to fulfill their mission. Karima pointed out that the operation of the U.S. Congress and the United Nations Security Council has been sluggish, exacerbating the deterioration of international law. He warned that this year, war conflicts and global warming will continue, further exacerbating violations of civil rights. News Report 11 German political parties are demanding the resignation of Alternative for Germany, AFD, party member, Claire, after German police arrested Claire's Chinese assistant, Guo Jian, on charges of espionage on the 12th, German police accused Guo Jian of providing the Chinese intelligence service with negotiation and decision-making information from the European Parliament. Vice Chairman of the Social Democratic Party Parliamentary Group, Weiser, stated that AFD was previously accused of accepting benefits from Russia and now they are suspected of engaging in espionage for China, placing the party in a state of criminal accusations. Claire is also a top candidate for the European Parliament elections in June this year, with polls showing that he may be elected as a member of the European Parliament. However, European Parliament members are calling on him to stop running. Green Party member, Reink, stated that the European Parliament urgently needs to clarify this matter, and the investigation should be concluded before the European Parliament elections. Secretary General of the Christian Democratic Union of Germany, Frey, stated that the accusations Claire is facing are unacceptable in relation to his re-election as a candidate for the European Parliament, thus he was forced to resign. News Report 12. According to Reuters, Aso Taro, the deputy president of Japan's ruling Liberal Democratic Party and former prime minister, visited Trump Tower in New York on April 23 to meet with former President Trump, with the meeting lasting for an hour. According to the Nikkei Shimbun, the Japanese government is concerned that if Trump is re-elected as president, he may demand Japan to increase its contribution to the U.S. military stationed in Japan, and therefore, request Japan to reduce its trade surplus with the United States. Japanese Foreign Minister, Uokawa Yoko, stated that Aso Taro's trip to the United States was a personal activity of a parliamentarian, and the government did not participate in it. Considering that Trump may be re-elected as U.S. president, many countries have begun to make some contingency plans. For example, UK Foreign Secretary Cameron visited Trump at Mar-a-Lago in Florida on April 8, Polish President Duda met with Trump in New York on April 17, and Hungarian President Orban met with Trump when visiting the United States in March. These meetings are mostly defensive actions.